Hello, this is Leslie Onstead. I'm with Color Art, and today we're going to do another fluid art technique. I'm using Artist Loft, uh, you can get that from Michaels, black to use my swipe technique, and I've started off by just covering the sides of the canvas with the black. Now, while we do this, I'll quickly talk about the mixture. Um, Artist Loft just with water on the black. All the other colors have water and silicone in them that I'm going to use in this video. But this black is just thinned down with water and it's uh, the Artist Loft Fluid Acrylic, even though it says it's fluid, it, it turns out to be quite fluffy when you add a lot of water to it. Like, like one ounce will almost make three ounces of paint. But I find it's better to completely paint my edges. That way when the paint goes over the side it looks more finished. Um, and it's so much easier to match your paint after you've done the piece than, I mean, during the piece when the paint is wet. <laughs> okay. Now here I just don't want the paint so random. So uh, I went ahead and moved that black down. This is the neon colored, it's green. It's just called green from Michaels, but they, it's just this bright neon color. Um, and I'm putting freckles of the green. Now what I've done is I've put my paint in little one ounce bottles with tips so I can control how I'm putting the paint down. So I'm just getting a good ample amount of the green on. And now I'm going to move to the primer element color Jasmine that we've mixed with the Vivid Clear Enamel. A little bit of water till it's a creamy texture. A couple shots of that WD-40 silicone that it's the one that says uh, Specialist Waterproof Silicone, uh, WD-40, in each one of our colors. So you can see I'm going back and forth. I'm making sure that my, my areas are, are uh, filled in. What I'm putting down is actually pure Floetrol. It's a medium they sell at Home Depot for painters to thin down their house paint with and not get brush strokes with. A lot of flow artists use it as a pouring medium or an additive to get some interesting looks. I discovered that if I mix just pure interference mica in it and lay it on a white canvas, the canvas is going to read as just white with shimmer and then the colors that I'm putting around it bleed in and stain the flow trial. It's really, really beautiful. So a little bit of interference red and a little interference violet. Um, or red pearl, violet pearl, depending upon what company you buy it from. Um, now, at this point, I'm taking little streaks of ginger flower. I've mixed in a bottle again one more time. All these colors I'm mentioning, with the exception of the Artist Loft Black and Green, are primary elements from ColorArt.com, mixed with the Vivid Clear Enamel, uh, thinned down with water until it's a creamy texture, with a couple shots of the WD-40 silicone in each color. So I, I laid that red in there just as a little accent for the pink. Um, next color, I think it looks like I'm picking up Guatemalan green, which is a beautiful teal. Uh-oh, looks like I'm adding a little more Floetrol, maybe. Yeah. Looks like I needed to add a little more Floetrol right there. The Floetrol uh, with the interference micas kind of dragged that down a little bit. I decided to put a little bit more in there, fatten them up before I added the Guatemala green. This is a really beautiful green teal, green turquoise called Guatemala green. Another primary element mixed with the Vivid Clear Enamel, water, and silicone. And I did speed this up, of course, so, you know, it, uh, this 16 minute video was actually, I think, almost 40 minutes long. So, this color is a copper, just pure copper mica, mixed with the Vivid Clear Enamel. It also has been thinned down with water and a couple shots of silicone. Um, and a beautiful orange coppery color next to a green. Blue is a perfect complement to each other. Um, 
looks like I'm pulling down a little bit of that green from the top. I wanted those green streaks to come down through. It, that green will actually continue all the way down the canvas. Eventually you'll see bits of it all the way through at the end. I know the next color I'm going to pick up, I believe, is um, the Solar Gold. After I get this Guatemalan green all filled in, it's real important when you do this, look for the holes. I, I made a couple of these where I thought, oh, the black paint's going to go over the top, the paint's going to all squish together, it's going to be fine. Not really. I recommend that you make it smooth. I, w I wouldn't overpaint it, but I wouldn't underpaint it. You want just enough paint to flow off the edges and very little to go on the paper below. But those gaps you'll end up touching up later on. Um, every once in a while you're going to see my hand off the camera because I keep filling up these little squeeze bottles. Like I need to mark Guatemalan green to finish this area. I have them filled in salsa cups ready and then I just refill this little bottle with the tip. It looks like a lot of paint but not really with all the water that's been added in there. Paint actually goes really long way in this process. You're, you're not going to waste very much. As I went a little bit further down, I knew I was going to use some lighter colors and that copper would have been kind of dark. So I'm going to let the copper and the gold meld together. Now this next color is African Jade and I'm using African Jade and Jasmine and randomly putting the African Jade and Jasmine across this bottom area and where I think some turquoise needed to be filled in where there was some missing I added that there. But you can see me add in the pink which is that Jasmine and African Jade which is like one of my most favorite colors in the world. Filling in the gold where I think it's it, it just needs to be part of the design. This is more intuitive painting. I not a specific plan. I just wanted to look like beautiful spring rain or underwater plants when this is all done. African Jade. Now there's some green going over the top of the accent. I told you I'd draw that green all the way down to the bottom eventually. And just at the base here I'm going to pick up a little bit of Floetrol. I'm not exactly sure where I do this but part of that, there we go, there's a bottle with some Floetrol in it without that uh, interference red and violet. I'm putting it on the bottom also the colors will bleed in. Squirted a little bit of gold around the top of the painting, just kind of randomly squirted it and edged the bottom with the gold. And now again I'm touching up, making sure that all these areas are touched up, filled in. Refreshing my black. I know I'm going to refresh my black on the top because it's, because it's been a while since I did it. So I put a little bit of more black paint on the bottom. And now I'm going to refresh the top just a little bit because I'm going to put the tip of my acetate paper in this wet black paint, let it kiss the paint, and drag it. You see, I put a few little black lines on the top of there. In hindsight, I'd actually wished I'd put a little bit more in the next piece I will because this has a lot of paint on this piece. This is a fairly large canvas. I think this is an 18 by 20. 
So the next thing I do is just kind of clean everything up around the table so I can get ready for the acetate. Lightly lay the tip of that acetate, acetate in. I just push my finger down into the black paint and let gravity pull it. Don't push down, don't pull too hard, just gently pull it across so the black can streak all the way across that paint. Now I still have a section on the top. Now see on the bottom, I lift that up. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk about the top section. I forgot about that. I took the tip of that paint that was left on the acetate and painted the base of the canvas with it. If you go back and look, you'll see me do that. This was a little tricky to get the acetate started on this second section, but it ended up okay. You just have to be very confident and be careful. Okay, we're going to speed up here a little bit so you can watch this change. One of the funnest part of this process is watching what happens when the silicone takes over and the black falls beneath and the cells start forming. Boy, the tops of those look like they're just popping right off the canvas. Oh, yes! I'm happy. Okay now, blow dryer and heat gun. Those little freckles on the top, I lost them. I think I have a solution for that for next time. I have an idea of what might solve that, but right now I'm going to try to use heat from either the blow dryer. The reason for the blow dryer is to blow the paint a little bit. I took my torch and just put some high heat on it just for a few seconds. Trying to encourage those pink and green freckles I put on top to come through. They eventually did, but when I take this piece into the gallery, I'm going to touch up the top so the piece looks balanced. I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm just going to go through some close-ups here. I'll try my very best not to have you go dizzy as we scroll through these different shots. I'm going to try to take the camera and move over different sections of the canvas so you can see the piece and all the beautiful cells. I'm going to put a kit up on Amazon and on colorart.com. The Day 10 Fluid Art Kit. Uh, this is actually my day 10 of doing these swipes. And again, thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye.